Welcome to another Gadget Lab show. I'm Michael Calori. And I'm Nathan Olivares Giles. Coming up later, we're going to have Christina and John showing off some lightsabers, and Robbie is going to bring in a Raspberry Pi computer. But first, Nathan, I couldn't help but noticing that strange and unusual tablet you're holding in your hands. Why, yes, this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1. Say that again. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1. That is a long name. <laughs> yeah, Samsung loves long names. I think maybe a little longer than I like. But hey, Samsung's into it. You know? <laughs> so do. what is it? It's just it's a new Android tablet, right? Yeah, a new Android tablet. It runs Ice Cream Sandwich, the latest version of Android's operating mm -hmm. system. Um, and it's very, very similar to the Galaxy Tab 10.1 from last year. It looks almost exactly the same. One thing that I really like, though, is Samsung has thrown on some speakers on the front here which is really similar to a change that they made to the last version of the Galaxy Tab in Germany to avoid some Apple patent lawsuit stuff. Yeah, and that's actually, that's I think, one of the better features you can have in a tablet because you yeah. know, you're using a tablet for watching videos, watching movie, and the speakers are actually facing towards you yeah. instead of off to the sides. Or, you know. Yeah, it's a good move. I was watching some video on it last night, um, you know, working on a review of this device, and I uh -huh, really uh -huh, liked the yeah, front-facing yeah. speakers. It sounded great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There, but there are there are some things, of course, that I don't like as well here. There's one um, change or addition that Samsung has made here. They have a little tray for what they call mini apps at the bottom. And these mini apps, they are mini, they are small, but they just pop right over the top of whatever it is you're doing. Mm. And then they just kind of sit there. And it's not the most intuitive thing. Um, I thought at first they might be, you know, like widgets I could place around, but no, they're not. So I guess the idea is, hey, if you want to get an app really fast, you can pop in, pop out, maybe something you use a lot. But I would rather just go into apps and open up an actual app. Yeah, otherwise you just have this like persistent thing floating over the user experience. It's yeah. It's kind, of, kind of wonky. Yeah, it's a little weird. It doesn't feel like it's fully realized or finished, you mm -hmm. know? And also, this is the this is only a dual core processor inside of this thing, right? Yeah, Samsung has kept the hardware here very similar to what they were offering last year. That's probably why it's only four hundred bucks instead mm -hmm. of you know more. Um, but yeah, it's a dual core processor. It's not quad core like we're going to see from Asus and Acer and you know Toshiba's coming out with some quad core tablets too. So they're not trying to chase that you know arms race on that side. They're they're keeping it pretty similar to what they had last year. Interesting. And do you notice a big performance hit? You know. Um, I do feel like in navigating through the operating system and in launching apps that there's a little bit of sluggishness here compared to some of the quad-core tablets that I've tested out. But I don't even know if it's right to, to blame that on two fewer cores in this device because the iPad 2 and 3, those things scream, and I don't notice the same sort of sluggishness over there. And those right. are dual-core devices, right? Yeah, so, so it's a software issue. Yeah, I think it really comes down to how these different companies take the software, they build it and integrate it with the hardware. Mm -hmm. It's really a full package and you can't just add on or take away some extra hardware and expect it to be better. Yeah, so I guess it's sort of a combination of the system on a chip architecture and getting to, getting the hardware companies sort of getting used to writing software for that Yeah, and the operating system that lays on top of it. Right? Yep, yep. Um, well, you know, that's the thing that I've noticed about Android devices as of late is that, uh, you know, everybody's so concerned about the specs, you know, yeah. how many cores does it have, yeah. how much RAM is in it, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. and that's and that's like what's really driving the, the decision making around purchases of these things, but it's it's really, it's mostly about what it's like to pick it up and use it. However yes. that is implemented doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, it's just, that's the most important thing that you should look for when you're buying something, not what's written on the paper. Yeah, you're, if you if you you know buy one of these devices, you're gonna have to live with it every day, and just what's written on spec sheet doesn't necessarily mean that it's better or worse. You actually got to go out, use it, try it out, you know, read our reviews. <laughs> right? I don't care if the scrolling <laughs> isn't smooth. I want four cores. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, anyway, thank you for bringing that in, and uh, you'll be able to read Nathan's full review on Wired.com in the reviews section soon. Yeah. Do you have a first look of this up on the Gadget Lab? No. No? No, we don't. We're not going to do one? All right. So, so you're going to have to wait to see all of our gorgeous product photography that we're going to be posting around this tablet. Uh, but you will not have to wait to learn everything that you've never wanted to know about lightsabers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, Christina. Guess what I have today? It looks like a lightsaber. It is a lightsaber. I got it for $5 in the mission. That's no lightsaber at all. This is a lightsaber. Aww. <laughs> this is the laser saber from Wicked Lasers. It's a $100 uh, 
uh, polycarbonate attachment for for their actual uh, lasers that they already sell, the Spider 3 series. Gotcha. So it doesn't work with just any laser, just the Spider series it, ones? That's right. It doesn't work with any old laser nor any old Wicked Lasers laser. It has to be a Spider 3 series, the, the Arctic, which is blue, or the Krypton, which is green. And uh, basically, this, this comes off. That's the laser saber. It attaches to your existing um, Spider 3. And it's got that cool uh, magnetic anti-gravity system where this should sort of go down. It, the, the problem with the system is that, you know, you want to sheath and unsheath your laser with a yeah. Well, it does it, but to sort of uh, sheath it back up, I found you sort of have to hit it <laughs> like that. Gotcha. But you can unsheath it just like that. Cool. So does it have different modes? Because my lightsaber has three Well, it, it modes. does have different modes. This is the low power mode on the laser itself. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to hopefully kick it into high power mode. Let, let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna throw these oh my on. God! So my huge eyes. laser action right there. Oh, with these, <laughs> with these orange glasses on, I can't see. You anything. can't see anything with the orange safety glasses on. I'm gonna Boy. take my chances without the safety glasses. If this was not in the laser saber uh, casing, you would have to wear the glasses. And in fact, they recommend to not even use this device without the safety glasses. But um, I'm not looking at the terminus of the of the lightsaber, which would really mess up your eyes. Uh, so this is the laser saber. Let's see if we can sheath it again. Nope. See, it doesn't want to unsheath. Well, you rather. always have to be armed. I mean, <laughs> That's just... right. Here we go. One more time. Killer. And also, it looks great with the lights off, too. So in daylight, like, like, which we're approximating in the studio right now, it's, it's spectacular. If this was nighttime or if we turned the lights off, it would be even more bright. And... Well, why don't we check it out in the dark? On a scale of one to ten, how big of a Star Wars fan are you? Uh, seven point eight nine. That's very precise. I try to be very precise. You should be a programmer. I should be a programmer. <laughs> if you were, would you buy a Raspberry Pi board? Even you know, what? I'm not a programmer, but I should be. And I actually did buy a Raspberry Pi board. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. What is that? So the Raspberry Pi board is a, it's a microcomputer. It, it, it runs uh, three, there's three distros of Linux you can run on it. And you can get one for $25 or $35. The $25 version comes with one USB port and no Ethernet. The $35 one, that extra 10 bucks will get you Ethernet and an extra USB port. So you don't have to use a hub for, you know, whatever. And it also has what, like HDMI, it has standard As an video HDMI, a standard video out, um, audio out. SD slot. It has an SD slot, and the, uh, you know, it doesn't come with an SD card, but you know, you download the distro from Raspberry Pi's site, and you just throw it on an SD card, which you can pick up like anywhere now. I think they sell them at liquor stores, and you just yeah, they do. slide it in there, Boop, and there you go. That's your, that's your, that's your, uh, your drive. That's pretty hot. What are yeah. people using them for? Um, well, they made them uh, because they found that the entry level for computers became very high. And, and also the people who are buying computers, it's a family computer. Mm. So, um, you know, back in the day, the only person who had a computer was usually the super, you know, geeky kid in the family. And, you know, yeah. And then you could do whatever on it because no one else used the computer. You could, you could crash it. You could write code. You could do whatever. But now everyone in the house is using the computer. So they created this. So it's a, it's a very low entry price point for a computer, and you can do whatever. You can learn how to code with this, and it comes with uh, the Eclipse um, uh, uh, development uh, software, so, which, is, which is really nice. So you know, if you want to learn how to develop like programs. And yeah, it's one of the more popular. And you can plug into your TV. You can plug it into pretty much you know, anything that you know, composite out. And, or HDMI with audio. So, so people can use this, uh, you know, for like a recording device. They can use it as like a, a, a home theater PC or something like that. Yeah, well, mostly for streaming because I mean, oh, I guess you get like one movie on here. Oh yeah, right. Thing. But you could, right. you could, yeah, you could put XNBC on it. Oh, um, it's cool. you know, you can run Quake on it. 
which is, you know, you know it's, it's, it's not the fastest thing. It has 256 megs of RAM. It has an ARM processor. Okay, um, so it's kind of limited. Yeah, it's, but, it's, it's limited. But, but it's, it's one of those things that's like meant to get people into the whole idea of programming and building their own custom hardware and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's a super fun, super geeky uh, little thing. It, it, you know, like I said, I, I, this one, this is the $35 version. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just cool. I mean, 35 bucks for a computer. Well, yeah, that's actually, that's actually a problem because from what I've heard, these things are uh, ridiculously difficult to get your hands on. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, what sort of skullduggery did you I, engage I had in to, to procure um, this specific device? Well, I, mean, well, I, I was, I had it because we're, we're covering it on, on, on wired. So. Oh, so you threw down the big W. So yeah, so as, I kind of I kind of threw down the big W in order to to secure uh, this, but I but I paid for it okay. because I want one, and um, I'm a firm believer. If there's something I'm, I want, then I will pay for it. A lot of jealous people out there who got yeah shut yeah. Out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but they're, they're they're making more, and it's yeah, it is definitely it's the price point is so low, and it is so intriguing and, and kind you know and awesome that it's 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 they they. It's they're having difficulty keeping up with demand. <laughs> well, good. I guess it's a you know a good problem to have for them. Yeah, and I hope they get the hope they get so rich it ruins them. Yay! That's what my grandfather always used to say. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for showing off the Raspberry Pi, thanks. and I'm sure um, you're going to build something awesome and intriguing with it that you're going to post about. I on, should hope on so. Gadget Lab. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple ideas for this thing. Um, I mean, you could put in like a little RC car with a little robot computer. You could do everything. Yeah, you could build boring. like custom, like yeah. cases for it. You could nope. create. All right. Back to the drawing board. Hydro. Come up with something better. All right. Robots. <laughs> something mind blowing. Little robot. Robots would be cool. Well, we can't wait to see what Rodney builds with it, and I'm sure you can't wait to show it off. Oh yeah, definitely. I got it. I'm a big show off. <laughs> um, that's all we have time for this week, and we'll be back next week on the Gadget Lab. We'll see you then. Bye.